Here we go live from Palm Boss World Headquarters. Here we go, everybody. Bob Lust, the Pond Boss, checking in from World Headquarters, Pond Boss Magazine, Gordonville, Texas. Hey, got a pretty good show lined up for you tonight. We're, uh, of course, Jason Nepstad, you're going to be first one up. I knew you would. <laughs> it's like you can't wait for this. It's, you just you soak it in, dude. You just soak it in. I love it. Hey, tonight we're going to hang out with Greg Grimes from Ball Ground, Georgia. And uh, Greg's going to talk about. First thing he wants to talk about, actually, is the SLMP, Society of Lake Management Professionals. Their um, fourth, I think, yeah, it's their fourth annual summit is coming up here in January. And Greg and I are going to talk about that. Matter of fact, I see Greg's on board, so I'm going to invite him in, invite him in here in just a couple of minutes. Now, you guys that have done this before, you know the drill. Hashtag Pond Boss Magazine. Click like and share to your timeline, Pond Boss, 35 bucks a year, and you'll be eligible for a drawing. And I, you know, dude, I promised I'd have a drawing today, and I forgot to talk to Leanne, so we will catch up on the drawings for a Pond Boss hat and a mug. Matter of fact, I'll post that. I'll have, I'll have Leanne post that. Leanne, if you're watching, we need to handle that tomorrow. You and I, let's do this. So now I'm going to look on my laptop so I can see what's going on here. Because that's the way I can see the questions and the comments and stuff. So bear with me one minute. Oh, there it is. I see it on my laptop. Oh, nope, that isn't it. Hold up. I got to find it. Here we go. Where is Where is it? Where is it? And then I'm going to invite Greg on and we're going to talk. I'm going to refresh this thing. And in the meantime, hey, Brad Rom, Bill Russell, Leanne, hey, you're listening. We need to do the drawing, Leanne. I keep forgetting about it. Craig McBride, Brad Rom, good to see you. Greg Grimes is on. I'm going to invite Greg right now. If it'll let me. Hey, Greg. Okay, I'm trying to invite you. <coughs> okay, let me figure this out. <laughs> Holy cow. Something's going on here. Y'all bear with me a minute. It's going to take me a minute to figure this out. Sheesh. All right, I'm going to have to go to the settings or something here. Let me figure this out. Oops, that ain't it. John Henry, Troy Todd, Bill Russell. Greg, I promise I'm trying to invite you in and have no idea why it's not letting me do it. Good gosh, just when I think I get this stuff figured out. Whoop, 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 here we go. Here we go. Oh, I got it. It was my fault this time. I got it. Hey, Greg, I just invited you. Why don't you join us? Accept that invitation. He's we got it. Oh, there he is. What do you know? Greg, what are you doing, man? Just hanging out in the living room waiting on the, you to go live here. Hey, we're live, buddy. We're yeah. totally live. Tell us about that beard. <laughs> I don't notice it until uh, I get this up close and personal look here, and uh, I think I'm catching up to you there, Bob, with the gray. Yeah. Hey, well, wait. What do you mean gray? How old are you? Huh? 48 next Tuesday. 48? Yeah. Well, you'll catch up with me before long. I got a son almost as old as you are. <laughs> hey, you know what? I am so glad you joined us tonight. You came out of the deer stand. You've been hanging out in Florida, I think, and You've been doing some pond management work, right? We finished uh, our electro fishing for the year, for this calendar year today. I think Matt's actually going down to West Palm Beach and do one uh, January 9th or so. But yeah, we we finished up this morning actually. Sweet, that's great. So, what, what do you find when you're electro fishing this time of year? What are you finding? What are you seeing? Uh, it can be a little slow. Uh, you know, the morning time water temperatures in the 40s or 50s makes things a little more difficult. We were definitely south of where I live by yeah. about four hours, so it was a good 10 degrees warmer. Good. Um, it's a good time of the year to get a representative sample of recruitment, though. We do it in the spring. Those young of year bass, you know, are so small. Uh, we're seeing fry, but water's actually going to make it through. So we like to get a little better handle on bass recruitment. That's one thing I like about it. 
we can actually do a little better job on some bass harvest as well. Are you seeing any patterns from lake to lake to lake to say not normal? Um, no, I wouldn't say no. no nothing, nothing really stands out. It's just been a, you know, it's subjective. Or you know, clients always want to have it perfect and, and have the perfect conditions, and <laughs> it's hard to time it that way. You know, whatever we, that we means. Know, right? We see enough fish to know what's going on, but you know, clients want to see that one big bass they have, and sometimes it's difficult to do that. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those those big bass they live in the they live in the prime spot. Hey, Frank James, Josh McCreary, John Henry, Tory Rhodes, Dave Weber checking in from Northeast Kansas. Hey, hey, Dave, did you get your Pond Boss magazine, dude? You're in it. Tim Wood, president of the SLMP. We're going to be talking about that here in just a minute. Wendy sure. Wolf Grimes, holy cow, what is she doing checking in? You're busted, dude. She, she's somewhere in the house. <laughs> is she? She's around there behind you somewhere. Chad Donaldson, yeah. what, what are my thoughts on Trump's new wetlands law change? I have no idea what they are. I don't pay attention to politics, but I do pay attention to, to laws, so we'll uh, see that. Daniel McWhorter, Mike Cottrell, Jason Nepstad, where said hello to Jason. Sean McNew, president. Whoa, he knows who you are. Uh, Stuart. There's Stuart Swanson. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, he's not too far away. Mitchell Morton checking in from Foster Lake Management. What's up? Well, I'm going to tell you what's up. Wendy says she's upstairs keeping the boys quiet. Oh, good. That's Dude, good. I mean, they were, in the, they were in the deer stand with you, you know, <laughs> doing their grunt call, right? That's right. <laughs> that's, what we, that's what we said it was anyway. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Stuart says, uh, hello from Gordonville. Drink wine soon. Yeah, you know, Stuart, when I first met Stuart, we had a party at our house, and he figured out where my wine stash was, and he had a ladder so he could get to it. So it wasn't long until we didn't have any wine, but we liked it. Right, right, Stuart? <laughs> You're laughing. I see you. Chris Piper, Mark Carradine, Big John Water Movers. I don't know what that means. Sounds like a plug to me. Gato Ventura. Gato is a... Uh, He's a stud, man. He's a celebrity. Chris Chavetta checking in from um, Innsbruck over there west of St. Louis. <clears throat> so, Greg, you know what? Let's first talk about SLMP. What does that stand for? What is SLMP? We're going to, you know, one of our objectives tonight is to talk about the SLMP upcoming conference. Oh, whoops, sorry. You said summit. it wrong. They got a summit <laughs> coming up, and I get to uh, hang out with you guys. Well, I see you guys. I'm a part of that group, although I haven't been real active the last couple of years. So, uh, look at there. There's Zach Russell checking in from McFadden Lake up in uh, North Carolina. Tell us tell us a little bit about SLMP and the upcoming summit. So, uh, SLMP, Matt Rail likes to say slump. I don't like to say that. Doesn't have the best uh, roll off your tongue. But uh, Society of Lake Management Professionals. Um, and you know, pretty descriptive name. Uh, it's not for just anybody. It's for people in the lake management industry and all of the vendors and colleagues and people in the lake management world. So, uh, it's designed for lake management. Uh, but we're really excited to have inroads with other public entities, municipalities, professors, colleges, universities, but have the main emphasis be a way to learn and promote uh, our growing industry. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> this uh, organization actually was, um, the idea was banged about in one of the Pond Boss conferences. I think Pond exactly. Boss won. Sure you was. Know, sure was. And we started talking about it back then. And good gosh, that was, shoot, 10 or 11 years ago. And now the SLMP has been formed. I was a charter member with you and a bunch of different folks and uh you know sue cruz bob robinson um trent lewis um dave beasley kevin tucker you know a bunch of us got together and we started to put this thing together created the constitution bylaws formed this organization and basically the organization was formed for professionals so i'm going to throw a little background out there this uh starting in january i'll start my 40th year wow as a private fisheries biologist in the private sector, 40th year, dude. I mean, I'm only like 51 or something, <laughs> 63. <clears throat> and so, you know, over time, I've been able to watch and help develop this industry and see what it was going to turn into. And I'm excited to see where it's going next. And, you know, over time, 
there was a there was just a few of us. I mean, there was Johnny Foster in uh, over in North Carolina. There was Mike Mitchell over in Colorado. You met Mike. You talked. I was Mike. I was with him yesterday, actually. Okay, there you go. Actually, this yeah. morning. It's a long yeah. day. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were kind of running a parallel course, doing similar things, but in different ways as this pond management industry began to, to, to birth itself. So now I think this industry is kind of in this toddler phase, and I'm thrilled to death that there's an organization that has been formed to kind of help unify that. You know, of course, Pond Boss tries to unify that, you know, the, the industry as well with, with our conferences and trade shows and things. So and, and now, I would say it did, Bob. I, I would say that I, I would say it, it took us to this point. I think it just kind of outgrew just that one little thing, and it's big enough to kind of stand alone. Yeah. And again, that's some of the things we want to be right there beside Pond Boss as well to help support the pond owners. But it was you just bet. out of necessity we needed something anymore. You always use the word cottage industry, and you're exactly right. And uh, I see it every day. So many more people getting into it. And I'm like, well, there can't be that much business. There's that much business. It's just, it's continuously growing, that's for sure. You know, what people don't really understand is in the United States of America, there's somewhere between four and a half and six million private ponds and lakes. I see Fred Bingman watching. He's got one of those, you know. And out of those four and a half to six million ponds and lakes, I bet you less than 5% of them are managed. And the majority of the owners don't realize they can manage their pond. And do things with it. So what the SLMP is trying to do is to unify the professionals, bring them together, <clears throat> kind of set some standards, you know, which this industry can grow upon. Is that a fair statement? No, I, I, I couldn't say it any better. All right. So now this the SLMP's uh, summit is coming up, and I see Tim Woods on board. Tim, you know, if Tim was joining us here, he'd have something to say about it. I see Stephen Barton, Michael Gray. You know, uh, my wife, Debbie Dobbs Lust, Debbie Lust checking in. Ashi Saluki, Chad Donaldson, any tips on using a Hig Higgin bottom pipe attachment? Oh, Lord, I don't even know what that is. Kelly Duffy's on. So there's several pros watching us tonight. Tell us about, I'm going to back up here a little bit, or back out a little bit. Tell us about the upcoming summit, what's going to happen, who's going to be there, and why should a pond owner come to that? Yeah, so uh, I want to hit a couple of things here, and that's one of them is why to be there. That's that's probably the main thing. So, again, like we talked about the other day, uh, summit versus conference, it's just a little different. It's not you're just going to sit there and, and listen to a presentation. Um, Pond Boss Conference has always been better with this, too, that I feel like than some other places. But So you've got time to answer, uh, ask some questions, and get some solid answers. Um, so we're excited about the fourth annual summit. We've grown uh, somewhat. I think we could have grown a little bit faster. Uh, we're excited. We do have an executive director now that helps out because we're all lake owners. I mean, we're all uh, lake company owners, and we only have so much time. Um, but we're really excited. Tim Wood, you mentioned, uh, is president-elect, which means you get the duties of putting together the program. And we may go over that in a second if we have some time, but we have a yeah. really good program. Why should you be there? You should be there because I'm going to learn. I mean, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable. I think you're pretty knowledgeable, but we, we always have to learn. And there's some lot of things we can learn about. Uh, as a vendor, you're going to have the opportunity to be in front of, I don't want to give a number and be wrong, but, you know, 15 to 30 lake companies. Uh, I know we're going to have three other employees there. So a lot of lake professionals that you're going to have the opportunity to interact with to promote your products and services to the lake uh, industry as well. And if you've got uh, employees, I can't think of a better place to be to help uh, help them learn more about the fisheries and water uh, water world as well as how to run your business. Sean Banks just checked in. I see him. He's joined in this uh, fracas. You know, the thing about – I've kind of been thinking about why a pond owner should come to the SLMP Summit. And I think one of the smartest reasons to come is if you're a real serious pond meister, you know, and you want to learn more about how to take better care of your pond, you're going to be in the room with, what'd you say, 15 to 30 of the best, you know, smartest, most experienced pond management companies in the entire United States. No, I, t I completely agree. And so you want that higher level, my, my wife, Always gets on ask the ask the question why 
maybe that's just us scientists do that, and it drives her crazy. <laughs> you know? That's my but favorite here, question. Here you get to understand the why. You, you're not just told to do this. You understand the why behind it, and you'll be there to get some of those more in-depth answers that you may not be getting in some other venues. So for, for private, private landowners, private pond owners to consider coming to this conference, it's going to be you can dig into it much more deeply than you could on a forum or on watching videos or, I mean, you can sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or build a relationship with, with a number of folks that are in it. Tory Rhodes has got his ticket. Tory has been on this. He, I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with Tory. I can't wait to meet him and shake his hand, but he does not miss this show ever. That's so right. It, looks like it says he's got his ticket. So there you go. He says, so Chad Donaldson, when will it be coming to the Pacific Northwest? Let me help you with that, Chad. Never. <laughs> we are we do plan to move around uh yeah for sure we've tried to move from florida to the southeast a little bit more we may be going to the midwest but uh we would love to go out west for sure <laughs> yeah yeah okay well you know what chad you need you need to come to memphis tell you know tell everybody about where it is when it is let's do the let's do this do the five w's who what where when and why yep. whoops let's sorry my little uh Stan just lost it. So it is January 22nd through the 24th. Uh, it is in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm probably going to forget some of this. Um, what else was it? <laughs> what what who, were the five again? Who, what, where, so, when, and why? Okay, so we went over the why. We hope we're going to go over that more over the program. But again, January 22nd through the 24th. It starts around lunch on the 22nd. Um, it's going to end with a banquet the night of the 24th, so folks can head out from there um, in Memphis, Tennessee, at the Holiday Inn in downtown Memphis. Uh, we will be having a social a barbecue the first night, that Tuesday night, at a place called the Rendezvous with beer. Uh, Tim Wood made <laughs> sure that, that that took place. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have a social in-house and then a really nice banquet that last night with some entertainment. Um, what's, the, what's the entertainment going to be? Uh, you part of the time. Uh, what we are, we yeah, we're trying to get uh, the guy who was there last year, and anybody who was there would understand. Carlton Lane was, uh, I mean, the guy could be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> um, and we're going to have an auction, and he did a great job with that. What? Uh, tell us about the agenda. I think folks so, would enjoy hearing about that. Yeah, and I don't want to just sit here and read it because we will have a, a official announcement on the website. There's some things there now if you go to uh, lakeprofessionals.org. Um, but Tim's got an updated one. So I don't want to just sit here and read it, but I do want to hit some hit some high points because it's pretty impressive. Uh, one, of the first, one of the first things is I want to mention every morning we have a coffee talk. And this is going to be peer-to-peer. -peer. We'll have a discussion. It'll be one of the lake management professionals or one of the vendors is going to sit there and say, what do we want to talk about? What's something that we can learn? And you can go and just sit down and have that interaction. Um, but the official conference, official, say I said conference, the official summit is going to start uh, around 1 o'clock. Uh, you're going to start us off, Bob. Um, what am I talking you're about? Be, you're going to, yeah, I'm hoping you remember. You're going to be talking <laughs> about what you just said a second ago, uh, past and present pond management where we're at and you're going to tease I, I think you uh agreed to this you're going to tease what the future pond management is going to be like and you're probably going to learn in the two days that you're there and you may deviate on what the future is going to be like yes. and then that's going to be at the bank we're going to talk about it um one thing really cool too is right at the get-go we're going to break up into a technical session designed for employees so they're going to have the opportunity to learn about fountain and aeration field repairs they're going to have an oppor uh, opportunity to talk about a really cool topic that Zach Pritchard uh, is going to be talking about is, is, is this company, is this organization for you? Or is it not a right fit? Or is it really you need to change your responsibilities? And I know that's going to hit home with my employees as well. Oh, boy. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm really excited. And then, and then the owners or managers will be in another room, and we're going to be talking about effective communication with your clients. I know I can learn from that as well, uh -huh. uh, and how to uh, figure out the worth of your company. I have no idea what my company is worth. 
And when you say uh, figure out the worth of your company, Bruce Canelo yep. just joined in. There you go. Chuck, Chuck Brickman's checking. He's a pondmeister from the middle of Missouri. When you when you say what's the worth of your company, are you talking about intrinsically or financially? What's what do you mean worth? Uh, financially. You know, what, okay. How can you say? You know, we've got to be thinking about what our exit strategies might be. Uh, what does this company work? How are you going to value this company to some other enterprise? And it's something that's uh, it's good to know that knowledge. So we're going to have a way to help determine that. Um, so more of go the uh, go ahead. So so more of the agenda that's attractive from the pond management side. What what do you see coming up with that? So um, we're going to go into fishery management. Uh, Wes Neal's going to be talking about uh, destratification. Hold it, hold it. And talk, how that can wait, increase wait, wait. your carrying capacity. Go ahead. Yeah, let, let's talk about Wes Neal. Wes sure. Neal, yeah, he's, Wes Neal has spoken, and I think at four of the Pond Boss conferences. I think so. He is, uh, matter of fact, he's co-editor of these small impoundments textbook that uh, was an American Fisheries Society. It is the only textbook out there, and Wes Neal is co-editor of that with our, our dearly departed great best friend dave willis dave, yeah 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 those two guys put together an outstanding textbook so wes neal is one of the stars of academia at mississippi state so he'll be there talking about the stratification and what well, i mean something that people will be interested in is yep on how you can increase your carrying capacity of bass by having a lake properly destratified. um one other thing, we have several splatterings of halves, harmful algae blooms, or I should say cyanobacteria. Um, Dave's gonna, Dave Beasley's going to be talking about cyanobacteria and trophy largemouth bass, which is a topic that Mike Mitchell and myself were just talking about this morning. Yep. Uh, Brian Gray, which I know you know well, he's going to be talking about some of the research with fisheries habitat. Um, I'm going to be giving a talk on the current trends of uh, largemouth bass management. So a lot of fishery talks um, waited at the very first day. So if you can't make it the entire time, I did want to mention that, and your really emphasis is on fisheries, we try to weight that pretty heavily so you get a lot of that meat at the very beginning. Um, versus the back of it, if you can't make it the whole time and you want to be there for vegetation, you know, Troy Golds is going to be talking about cyanobacteria control from the vegetation standpoint on the last day. Um, as well as some DOT regulations on herbicides that I didn't know anything about. Um, there's going to be a proactive vegetation control talk. And, and then in between, we have some wonderful talks on stormwater management, lake beautification. Uh, another thing under fisheries that I'm super excited about, and you mentioned founders earlier, you didn't mention Wade Bells, and I'm bad about forgetting names too, but Wade was there from the very beginning. You bet. And, and, and I don't want to spill the beans now, but you want to be here to hear about this new fishery app. You may want to get him on Pond Boss to talk about it at some point. Yeah, he and I have been talking about that. I'm pretty yeah. excited about that with him. So I'm excited to hear the details as well. So he's going to be talking about that. You bet. Um, Mike Matt, Freeze, Rail, Matt Rail just joined in. Howdy, Matt. How are you? Matt's, so Matt's Matt. going to be talking. Where is his on this list? Matt's going to be talking about solving the phosphorus riddle. Uh, there's another talk on phoslock. Uh, which all ties into the same thing we just talked about, cyanobacteria and halves. You know, it's pretty amazing. One of the things I think our viewers would like to hear about is, um, you know, when you start talking about phosphorus and you start talking about what it, its impact on water, <clears throat> it's kind of a, it's kind of a, that's kind of a feast or famine topic. You know, in the South, where you and I work a lot, w we look at phosphorus as the limiting factor, but a good part of the United States of America look at phosphorus as the problem. Sure. You know, where there's too much of it. You know, that's especially true where there's a lot of agriculture. You know, uh, talking to Bruce Kanya, the uh, Floating Islands International guy up in, in uh, Billings, Montana, Shepherd, Montana. I mean, their biggest number one problem is too much phosphorus in the water. You know, there's dead areas in the Gulf of Mexico because there's too much phosphorus being dumped in from the Mississippi River. But when you go down the street, you're managing a pond 25 miles away from Ball Ground, Georgia, your phosphorus is a limiting factor. That's you know, right. and, 
And so, like, good gosh, I mean, there's there's all kinds of things to learn about that. And Matt Rell is a great, great candidate to talk about that. Yeah, so we, we get you, – you're exactly right. What we're starting to figure out is uh, I remember one time at the Pond Boss Conference, I said the most important tool that I can have is not this DO meter. You probably don't remember this, but I said it's this Sechi disc. I can learn so much from that. You bet. I don't know if I'd agree with that statement anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because just because I see there's a bloom, it doesn't mean it's a good bloom. That's and just correct. because I see there's not a bloom doesn't mean I may have to dump phosphorus. We need to dive, dig a little bit deeper and do some nutrient management to get the real answers. Sean McNew's kind of poking at us. I don't want to reach through and slap him yet, but one question he's got is, is Keith and Kim Edge? Been, who's Keith and Kim Edge? Who's that? Yeah, they're in, they're in middle of middle Georgia. They've got a hatchery and do some pond management. They were at the summit a couple of years ago, so I hope to see them out there again. Good, good. The Kerry Martin says uh, Matt Rail and his jar of stratification. That was great. An he inside did that joke. Pond Boss conference a few years ago. That was really fun. Um, and the one thing I want to mention on the agenda we haven't mentioned, and this is how it's a little different is we have a whole topic on business operations. Talk to me about that. So we're going to have, for one, sell, I use Salesforce. I know a lot of companies use Salesforce, and I use maybe 10% of its capacity. So we're going to have a talk on how you use Salesforce to its higher level. Uh, we've got a topic on branding and marketing, how you're going to separate yourself with proper branding. Another one on Internet marketing. Um, these are things, Bob, that... I've tried to do, I took a couple of business classes. Um, they're really expensive and they're really so broad and so general. It may not be for our type of service industry. This is a topic that's designed specifically for our industry. That's just a huge wealth of information that I don't think you can get many other places. Uh, and you get it as part of this while you're also doing the cool stuff we like and talking about fish and water. So, so some of these pond management guys or some of these pond owners, when they come to this, it's, this is going to be a lot, this is going to be a lot bigger than just let's learn about our pond. This is going to be let's learn right. about business. Let's learn how to handle our small business. Exactly right. And then the other big difference, since we're talking about that, is, is with the vendors. Um, it's not just we have a, a, a booth that you hope that someone comes by and visits, you actually get, as part of a vendor, you actually get a round table, which means you sit there with a title of your round table, make it, make it pretty sexy so people want to come and sit there, but it's limited. So you've got a certain amount of time you can't get to every single round table. I may not want to go to one on stormwater management because I don't do that, um, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's so that there's an intimate setting. So when the people are sitting down at your table, it's a lot more interaction because you have five people sitting there talking to you about uh, whatever that topic is for that title. So that's, that's one of the other big, and I've really learned a lot of the round tables and the vendors who have done that have just been so excited to have done it. And it's really great for a new vendor who's never been to one of these, someone you're not familiar with because you get that. New, and it's almost even better in a way. I hate to say that, but it's like, Hey, who's the new kid on the block? Right. You want to, yeah. you want to sit down at that table and hear what they have to say. There you go. Todd, always, Todd Austin just joined in. Mike Buca just checked in. He's uh, I got to meet Mike at Kingfisher Society. He was invited to come talk about side scan sonar. And, man, that guy is the swim bait king of the planet right there. He needs to come out then. He should. It's not that far <laughs> to Memphis, Tennessee. Plus, you're going to be on Bill Street. Tell us a little bit about the venue. We're, we're, I mean, I'm coming. I'm going to bring my guys, at least a couple wish... of my guys. Yeah, I wish Tim was on to talk more about that side of things. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, in a, it's in Memphis. What do you think about when you think about Memphis? Blues and barbecue. That's right. It's going to be right there. So yeah. As much structure as we have and as excited in the talk, there's time in the afternoons to meet with your friends, go out and enjoy yourself and enjoy Memphis uh, in the evening hours while you're there. And some people plan on getting there a day early or staying a day later. You know, we were going to plan a duck hunt while we're out in Memphis. There's some good duck hunting there. But you and I, Bob, will be flying to Galveston. That's right. Another conference right after. So we're going to miss out on that. But it's a, yep. it's a great town. We're really excited about it. Uh, it's, it's for the entertainment value as well. Has anybody invited Bill Dance to come step in and say hi? I, I'm hoping you're going to do that. Hey, I got his cell number. <laughs> Need to talk to Troy. Maybe he'll do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, Troy's Troy's best friends with uh, right. Bill Dance. <clears throat> he's gonna, and if he's in town, if he's in town, I bet he'd come by. I'll call him and ask him. Hey, you know what? Josh Flowers just finished his Bible study. He's checking in. There so, Josh, glad to see you. You know what? Let's. Uh, it's seven o'clock. Hey, I'm gonna do a commercial. Pond Boss Magazine, thirty-five bucks a year. Tell us. Hey, you know what? Help me out here. Tell us. Sure. Give me your spin on Pond Boss Magazine. Well, I mean, I think I'm stealing some of your stuff, but I'm being very sincere on this. If you want to learn some of the why that we talked about, if you want to get your knowledge base up of pond management, it's the best investment you can ever make. I mean, I can talk to them blue in the face to my clients, but they're going to learn some stuff that I can't get out in a few minutes by having the subscription. So and it's, it's really a no-brainer. If you want to learn more about the pond management industry, you need to get a subscription to the magazine. 35 bucks. I'm going to take Debbie out to eat Friday night. My, my daughter gets a master's degree in nursing in, in, in Waco, Texas. We're going to go out to eat Friday night. I'll spend 40 bucks. And that'll be gone the next day. You know, and here, 35 bucks for a year. Pretty good investment. You know, uh, one thing that's pretty flattering that you've told me before is while you were in school, you found Palm Boss Magazine. And kind of tell, tell, folks, tell folks a little bit about that. That's a cool story. Well, I mean, uh, well, thank you. I don't know. I didn't know it was that cool, but I was working with another lake management company, and I just started realizing there's so much more than just uh, uh, what we were doing, which was uh, doing a couple of sane halls, but a lot of vegetation management, not a whole lot with fishery. So I got in the magazine. I'm like, man, I want to do more of this. And that's when things shifted, and I actually went to University of Georgia to do a continuing education class. And at the last minute, uh, through some other circumstances, we were able to switch and actually apply for grad school and went to get my master's in fisheries. But, but, but the truth was, I mean, the Pond Boss magazine kind of got me jump started. That's not really what we talked about in undergrad in biology. Uh, so I was excited to, to get that degree and then go on and start my business and, and going forward. But that was a big part of it at the beginning, reading the magazine myself. I love that. Sweet. Go Greg. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm, I do want to take a minute, and because we do have a couple of sponsors, I want to thank Purina Mills, Texas Hunter, and SLMP. Uh, by the way, there'll be a full page ad in the January February issue of Pond Boss for you subscribers. So if you don't want to remember all the details, it'll be coming out again soon. But if you want to go ahead and register for the for the summit, uh, how how do they do that? Let's talk about that for a so minute. Yeah, that is at lakeprofessionals.org, lakeprofessionals.org. There's a register here tab. You'll click on that. Um, if you're a vendor, um, you can get a 10% discount as well. But through Monday, the 17th, there's a 10% discount. So if you're an accredited member, which don't sign up for that, you will need to fill out some paperwork to become an accredited member. It's going to be $338. So sign up as an associate member if you're a lake management company. 203 bucks until the 17th and it's going to go up 10% more. Uh, if you're a vendor, it's going to be uh, discounted to 787. And if you're like, I am, I signed up as an accredited member, but then I signed up with three more individuals. Uh, and there's an individual tab. Now on the sponsorships, there's three levels of sponsorships. There's a break sponsor for $1,500, a social sponsor for 2,500 and a banquet sponsor for 3000. And that's going to get you more recognition uh, it gets social media posts. There's going to be signage in the banquets and the socials. Uh, you'll get some time to talk uh, in front of the crowd if you go up to the banquet level. And I did want to say this, Bob. There's already been some people signing up, and I really want to thank them. Um, Outdoor Water Solutions and Mossback both are at the $2,500 level right off the get-go. Wow. Seapro, Troy with Aqua Services, Aqua Fix, and the Mapping Network have already signed up with the break sponsors. And it was overwhelming. Whoops, falling again. It was overwhelming. <laughs> you need to get a bigger boat. I'm so glad you were there and we did the first summit. And how difficult it was to plan everything. And I'll never yeah. forget looking at the menu. And I'm like, this is $4 for a Coke. And you're like, well, no, actually, Greg, there's 18%. The hotel is going to add another tax. So it's like $5 a Coke. That's right. If it was not... Honestly, if it was not for these sponsors and these vendors attending, we would lose 
thousands and thousands of dollars and it would never happen. So I don't want to be like NASCAR and thank these people, but we really have to thank these people for being there. You bet. Um, that's what supplies the dollars. The other dollars, we're, we're, not, we're not even breaking even with the amount of money the associate credited members do. So the vendors are a big part of it. We think there's a huge value, of course, but we really, I can't thank them enough for helping us out. You're preaching to the choir, man. I put on 70 conferences. I get it. I don't know how you do it. You know, 150 bucks for a pot of coffee. You know, I get it. I get it. Nate Herman's checking in. Troy, I guess Troy's nose was was itching. He knew we were talking about him. Hey, Troy, uh, the group here, since you're on board here, they want Bill Dance to come in and just say hello. See if you can pull that off. Pull that off. Yeah, come on. Troy can do that. Philip Wildman just checked in. He's a good friend of mine just up the road a ways. He, uh, he's the one that sings our little uh, intro music for the for the Palm Ball Show. So we love Philip Wildman. <clears throat> what else do we need to talk about, about SLMP and the upcoming summit? Anything else you can think of? Um, no, I mean, I don't want to just take, I don't want to bore people because they can go to the website and get some of that information. Um, I just feel like I'm repeating myself, but um, – there are a lot of people that I'll say it this way. There are a lot of people that I wish were there that they don't understand the value because they haven't been there. Does that make sense? Sure. What is it? I feel like I'm going to, I feel like I'm beating them up. Like you need to be there. You need to be, but you know, and and maybe everything hasn't been perfect, but you know, maybe don't hear about the bad stuff, but I've had so many compliments over the years of how wonderful it was to, to their business. And I just, you know, I hope every pond management business can succeed. I really do. Uh, and so I just really wish they could be there to do that and see that it's geared towards that. And, and I will say one other thing, you know, several of us will be coming off the board. You know, this is my second time being the president. I was the first and now we're again. And uh, honestly, I'm looking forward to just kind of sitting back a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, we need some more board members. There's some people that are active in our industry that I'm excited to see are going to be here and help drive this thing on into the future. Nate, Nate Herman came on a little bit late, and he says, I'm on the fence about attending. What's your sales pitch? First, we've already done the sales pitch. I guess he'll need to we go have. back and look, but I don't know that he will. But just just in your elevator spiel, why should Nate Herman show up to SLMP? Well, Tim had a pretty good quote. Uh, can I find it here? I don't know. Um, oh, I don't see it in all my notes here. I thought I was going to. Talk Paraphrase. about it. But why should, why, should he, why should he be there? Now, I wanted to see this. This is a great quote. Here it is. What happens if I train and educate an employee and then they just leave? Well, the answer is, what happens if you don't train and educate that employee and they stick around forever? Ooh. Oh. So wow. I, really, I, I mean, wow. I had to steal that because that's Bam. because, you know, do you want, to, you want to be where you are or do you want to increase your revenue? Do you want to have happier employees you want to have happier clients that's what we're doing here wow hey nate nate are you listening to that <laughs> you know what not only do you get to see bob lust give the keynote to start the thing and to end it you get to hear a whole lot of great stuff right in the middle which uh what, of course he wasn't here early on so he didn't get to hear the talk about valuing your business you know how to how to um how to brand yourself a little bit better of course, Nate, Lake, you know, Lake Life. Had a I think he's done a good job with that part. So he's he's kind of got that branding thing down. Just he's a got bit, that right? down. He should be yeah. giving that talk, actually. <laughs> yeah, he should. He should. Terry McNabb says, "Thanks, boys. Great talk last year, first time for me. Well worth it." So there's Terry McNabb. Thank you, Terry. Yep, yeah, that's good. You know what? Let's shift gears. It's uh, almost seven ten, and let's let's hit some. Uh, let's talk a little bit about. Aquatic Environmental Services, who you are, what you do, you know, this is how long you've been doing it, you know, what's your forte, kind of give yeah. us the, uh, talk about talk about you a little bit. I mean, I, I, I don't like doing that, but. <laughs> Let's do it anyway. But I, but I know we need to. So, uh, you know, again, started, started in school uh, in 96 uh, with my master's. Uh, I was in Lake Business in 93, uh, went back 96 through 98, got out, started my business, hired a first employee. And got my first shock boat around 98, 99. Um, then we started branching out. We work in a lot of different states. 
Um, you do know, we've had some talks about this, Bob. We did sell a portion of our business five years ago now. Uh, John Wilson with Aquadoc came in, and we're passionate about fish. I'm not passionate about treating vegetation. And so we were able to turn that over to someone who's as passionate about treating vegetation as we are about growing big fish. And it's been the best thing I've ever done. Uh, suck a little money in my pocket. That was nice. But the important part is it freed up our time. It freed up employees' time. So we can really concentrate on just fisheries and construction that helps uh, impact those fisheries. So, you know, we travel around and help clients grow big and more fish. I love that. I want to dig into that a little bit more. It just dawned on me why Nate Herman needs to come to the SLMP to give back. <laughs> That's a good point. He's gotten a lot from the industry over the years. That's true. Give back. Let people meet you, Nate. You know, spend some time there. Shake hands. Share some of your knowledge. I mean, you started young and you're still young. You know, and, and good yeah. gosh, you created a heck of a business. And you know, one of the things people would love to hear about from Nate is how faith and family have combined to build a business that has led to where it is right now. You know, when Giant Goose Ranch, who knows about that other than people that know about it. We have a lot of people in Memphis that don't. So, Nate, if you're still watching, there's why you need to show up. Give back and share what you've done and where you are. So, now, let's move this. Let's move. I'm going to move this away from that a little bit. Um, tell us, tell us. I mean, we got a lot of we got a lot of pond management people, pond meisters on here. We got a little bit bigger crowd than normal. Right now, we got about forty people that I know are watching. And what I figured out is that for everybody that I know is watching, there's probably another four that I don't know about. So there's probably two hundred people watching this now, and there'll be more people that come on. We'll end up with somewhere between seven and ten thousand views within a month. <clears throat> so. Take us through um, one of your, let's do this. Take us through a project that you love and take us through a project that didn't go as you thought it would. So take us okay. through a, a, a project that's just really clicking and working and why. So the projects that work the best, honestly, um, are, new, are new ponds. So we will start at the very beginning stages uh, in picking out the pond site. Is this a good pond site? And if it is, um, how do we design this lake to match the watershed? Learned a lot from Mike, Mike Otto, by the way, you know, to match that watershed size and the habitat that you talk about a lot, and then the fish stocking. And so the first question we always ask is, what are your goals? So if the goal, for instance, is trophy bass management, we're doing that completely different than a balance, a true balanced fishery. And so what happens there is this exponentially incredible growth throughout the first couple of years and things are going great where there could be a shift even at the beginning stage so i'll shift the answer to that is people rest on that and guess what happens year three and year four and year five it starts to collapse start to collapse yeah and so some of our best fisheries some of our best examples of an incredible success story also become some of our biggest failures all within that same body of water so, so what, my point what, of that is that you've got to constantly be on top of things. So what I just heard you say is, is that you've got so many ponds you can manage and guide people through. By the way, Wade Bales just checked in. Good to see Wade. Glad he's on board tonight. So you can only consult, guide, counsel people as far as they're willing to, to do what they're supposed to do. Right? That's I mean, right. There's an article coming up in, in, in the January, February issue of Pond Boss that talks about an all-female bass fishery in Florida. And um, uh, it was written by Robbie Mays from American Sportfish. Mm -hmm. And about two years in, the, the guy that owned the property decided he'd sell it. So he stopped right there, dead in the water, didn't finish. You know? And so it's pretty frustrating, guys like you and I, when we take on a client who doesn't maybe have the same commitment we do, or isn't willing to get to the level of knowledge that they need to have to be able to fulfill that game plan as much as we can help them. Is that a fair statement? 
Yeah, it is. And it's, and it's education. It's educating our clients as to the why, you know, why you want to do some of that. And every client is different. You know that. You talked about the it factor years ago. I'll never forget that presentation. But uh, everyone's goals are different. Everyone's budget is different. And we try to work within those. I mean, we really do. I say, well, if you've got $1,000, let's figure out the best way to spend that $1,000 on this fishery. And the one thing they usually don't do, Bob, and you know what I'm going to say, is something they can do themselves, at least to a degree, is harvest fish. The oh, right. that's, that, that's such a killer. <clears throat> that's the num that, that is the number one deal with us. You know, so we, we've kind of created a game plan where if they're not willing to do it, we're going to coerce them. Oh, oops, sorry. Convince them that we can help them do that. You know, that's right. it, it's, it's well worth it because if you're not calling, you're dying. You know, I, I saw a quote that uh, Tim had earlier. If you're not learning, you're going backwards. You know, if you're, right. not, if, if you're not harvesting, you're not culling a pond fishery, you're going backwards. You know, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's absolutely right. So we can only be as good as the client is willing to implement what we see as good. You know, and, and really, I mean, my little pond management company, Bob Lusk Outdoors, we manage about, 250 ponds a year. That's about it. I mean, that's what my guys, there's, there's on my team, I've got five people and it's everything we can do to manage 250 ponds out of 6 million across the United States. Crazy. So somebody's got to take some responsibility to take care of their own water. You know, and that, that is, that is a number one deal. You know, you only get a chance to stock a brand new pond once you only get you only get a chance to manage that initial fishery once, you know. And after year three, four, or five, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, we can't do what we're supposed to be doing for you. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and we de we depend on the clients to follow um, our program, and 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 honestly, we sometimes get busy with the next client, and we don't we don't hold their feet to the fire. Um, and, and I'm not that person to really push like we probably should uh, many times. But it's also, it's fairly easy to correct, but you're just, you're never going to replace that growth rate is what I call it. So you yes. lost that potential growth on a finite lifespan that you're That's never right. going to replace. Totally. Uh, that is, you know what? That may be one of the best take home points. Once we get past talking about all we've ever talked about with SLMP and all that, that is probably the best take home point. You got one shot at growth rates. You got one shot at providing the best of the best, what they need to be the best of the best. And if you miss that by six months or a year, ain't going to yeah. happen. Top end isn't going to happen. Right. <clears throat> and that's where we recommend quite often, we recommend starting over. Um, and no, most people don't want to hear that. But the truth is it's so much better a lot of times just to start over. Uh, it, we've, we've got, you know, eight pound bass routinely in three years now, uh, with proper stocking programs. So it's not like you're having to wait a huge amount of time. Um, and it's, and it's usually cheaper than having to stock adult fish and adjust habitats and adjust water quality from a situation that's in poor, uh, poor shape. Yep. We just, uh, we just wrote known a 26 acre lake north, I mean, southeast of Memphis, Tennessee and Mississippi for a group. You know, and that's the smartest thing they could do. We, we analyzed that lake, and we found bass about that big, six years old. Wow. You, wow. you, can't, you cannot unpickle that pickle. These guys bought that lake. They're sick and tired of catching dinks. They talked to me about it, and they spent a ton of money to rope known a 26-acre lake. You know, but they're going, be so, they're going to be so glad in about wow. three or four years when they're catching some big, big, big female bass. You know, <laughs> they're going to be glad they did that. You know, uh, your wife just chimed in. She says, oh, yes, good. so don't throw a giant bass from some other lake in your new pond before you're supposed to. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, she has to hear me gripe about that one. That's usually <clears throat> good-intentioned brother-in-laws when that happens. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh, yeah. Well, we, we, we have these extra fish over here, so we stocked them in your pond for you, bud. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. That's right. Tim Samples just tells you hello. It looks like I, I'm seeing it over here. Uh, I'm learning Facebook Live, but I'm seeing a lot of friends over there joining, and they may be bored on our pond management topic, but I'm glad they're here. Good. 
good. I'm glad they're rooting for you. And Matt Rells, he's uh, blessing us, saying good stuff. That's good stuff. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so you know what? It's really easy to sit here and talk about things people should do. It's pretty easy to talk about our pet projects. Talk about some things that you've seen happen where it just didn't work like you thought it should work, and why not? You got any of those? Oh, uh, you're trying to draw that out. Um, draw yeah, that I know out. We, we really try to, to block that out of our minds. You yeah, know, really. You want me to start while you're thinking? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, kick kick one off, and I'll come up. I'll come in behind you. Yeah, I've got I've got several lakes that we manage where no matter what we do, it just doesn't seem like it works. You know, we've got one lake in particular in Louisiana where we got into year four. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> the the fishery was stunning, but I told those guys in that South Louisiana area they have these things called birds. And birds roost in the uh, uh, trees. There's, there's, there's cypress trees growing up in this lake. It's a big rectangular lake. And I knew we were going to have some issues with that lake at some point. But it happened so fast, it made my head spin. And in year four, we had a, a, we it killed everything except carp. Yeah. You know? And good gosh, even though I wasn't blindsided, I wasn't proactive enough to figure out you know, there wasn't a squeaky wheel and everything was clicking, then it wasn't. In January last year, good gosh, it just, uh, you know, when I, when, I, when I got the call that they were having a fish kill and we couldn't do anything about it, right. I just wanted to vomit right there. You know, because these guys spent quite a bit of money to create this 55, 60 acre lake and all because of a bunch of birds pooping in the water every day. Sure. You know, they ended up with this toxic algae bloom and just, and it happened in January. You know, of course, wow. South, South Louisiana, and, and, and I, I wasn't thinking about that in January. I mean, I don't sure. think about that in January. Well, you, know? yeah, you, so, you got me thinking for sure, because I think my problem is there's been a lot of things not went well. I'm trying to pick out which one to talk about. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's the truth is there's so many things and i've heard claude boyd and i'm going to bring up this example just say it, it you know it uh, it all depends and one pond can be right beside the other pond and do the exact same thing and get different results but one that i can think of that just i beat my head against the wall is a lake that again we're low nutrients in this in most of the southeast and specifically the piedmont of georgia we do a lot of work and uh we tried heavy heavy doses of phosphorus we tried to shift to nitrogen we tested phosphorus, we tested nitrogen, we tested plankton. I talked to Claude Boyd several times, um, and my client fit the bill uh, for trying to fix it, and we never could fix it. So guess what we did now? We just said we can't keep, we can't get the phytoplankton, we can't get the base of the food chain, so we got in feed train northern bass, and we set up about, you know, I think there's eight feeders on a 14-acre lake. That's all they did. It, it, it made it better than what it was for sure. Uh, it's still clear, so it's a little bit tough to fish sometimes. But, yeah, there are situations where we're still learning. And there's some things I know now that maybe I could go back and try. But there is some point you've got to cut bait uh, and, and come back and realize, hey, as much as my knowledge base and I think I'm really good at what we do, there's some things we still don't know. Uh, and you have to adapt. I love that. The uh, Let's see here. Kerry Martin just – Came up with a pretty good quote, which is right on the money. Kerry says, each pond has its own fingerprint. That's right. You know, and sometimes each pond's got its own thumbprint. But sometimes it got its own footprint. And you know what? It's kind of hard sometimes to figure out if you're dealing with a fingerprint, a thumbprint, or a footprint, and what in the world are you going to do with it? You know, <laughs> which is exactly right. Shad Bank, uh, Sean Bank says, we practice fish management just as physicians practice medicine. There are always anomalies. You know, that's why they call it practice. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, I, I got never a, thought I got about a, that. I, I got a story. Else, I, you know what? I'm going to save this story for another show. No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you. One of the things I learned when I was in my 20s, I had a physician wanted me to come analyze his lake, and he was a real prominent physician in Dallas, and actually had a TV show, a five minute segment on the news. And uh, when, uh, when I went and analyzed his lake, I was intimidated. He's taller than me, and not a lot of people are taller than me. 
you know, and I'm sitting at the picnic table and he says, okay, Bob, what do you think I need to do with my pond? I said, well, it looks like your bass may be a little bit crowded and the bait fish might be a little bit low and you know, and the water's kind of clear. Maybe we ought to do something. And he pulled his glasses down. He looked at me. We were at a picnic table. He looked at me like this. He says, Bob, are you intimidated by me? Because I'm a physician. Man, I felt my foot start pawing at the ground. I wanted to dig a hole and climb in it. And I said, well, Dr. Johnston, you know, I guess I kind of am. He said, let me help you with that. You know what they call a guy that graduates last in his medical class? And I said, I said, no, that's right. He said, doctor. Yep. He said, look, I put my pants on just like you do. And when you come into my clinic, we're going to talk about your heart. I'm the expert. Out here, you're the expert. Now, what do I need to do with my leg? I said, dude, we need to put that shocker boat back in. We need to be culling your bass. You're way overcrowded. We need to get you some adult bluegill, start a feeding program, and get your water fertile. He said, that's what I wanted to know. Let's go. You know, so I love that. <clears throat> I love that. And, and, he's and the truth, exactly the truth right. is, Bob, you know this, Bob, some, some clients don't want to hear the truth. You know what? I don't care. I love I know. giving them the truth. And I've had to learn that the hard way, yeah. to be honest with you. Because yeah, I would yeah, yeah. want to say something, and they would just spite me on it, and I would cave in. And then now I'm just back, and I'm like, look, you're paying me a pretty good fee for my opinion. Let me let him tell you what we think we need to do. And you cannot believe it, but I'm at least going to tell you the opinion. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> and, you're, and, you're, and you're paying for it. You know? And you know what? I've got a head start on you. So you should you should listen. And if I'm wrong, fire me. That's right. That's right. If I'm wrong, fire me. I'm a results oriented guy. I tell people that all the time. If the Bingo, results aren't so there, then, hey, move on. Hey, we're gonna run out of time here in a minute. Frank James says if a bass is fat, can they also be stunted lengthwise? Sure, What's if your... they have a big fat belly for a temporary period of time. Yep, but you know, chances are if a bass is fat, it's uh, gonna grow. It's gonna get the length. So right. can it be can it be stunted? It can be stunted if it was stunted before it got fat. But if it's of the age and is growing as it's getting fat, odds are it's not going to be stunted because they're going to. I mean, it takes it takes a while for the bone to grow, but they can sure gain weight as they're gaining length. Jake the West is checking in. Let's see here. I saw something else on here. I thought was pretty interesting. Let me find it. <clears throat> um, Sean McDo says, "Can you have too much forage fish?" We get that all the time. My answer is no. Sometimes yeah. people want to say that, you know, what Sean does is stock shad, is that there's so many shad out here, Greg, my bass aren't biting. I don't buy that one. Yeah, I think I what, you, what happens a lot of times is you have to shift gears. If you didn't have thread fin shad before, now they're out in the open water. You have to shift your tactic up a little bit. But I think a nice, healthy bass that has a lot of food has the help to run around and chase a spinner bait. So it's, it's a give and take on if that skinny bass is hungry and is going to bite better or that fat bass has more energy to fight better, uh, the chase of lure. So, no, I don't think you can have too much forage. No, I don't think you can either. I, matter of fact, I'd like to try that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's see here. Bruce Condello, love the commentary on previous failures. You could do a 10-hour segment on mine. Is that all? Dude, I mean, <laughs> I could sit here. I, I, I cannot tell you. I, I mean, you know, Greg and I can sit here and talk about the different ways we've killed fish. We can oh, yeah. talk about things that we've tried that we knew would work, but they didn't. Didn't. You know, and then there's then there's things like Richmond Mill Lake where it works way beyond what you expected. But now, you know, they got to figure out how to do it again. You sure. Know, so just all this stuff is just crazy. And Nate Herman says, 20 hours, Bruce. Chad, uh, Kerry Martin says, like that lake at Traveler's Rest that we had a hard time shocking. What's that? What's he talking about? Uh, oh, gosh, yeah, it was up in North Carolina. Yeah, the client never paid me for that one. <laughs> Ooh, it was super, wow. super, super, super clear. And we couldn't get any fish, but we could see the fish. So we took time to take about four hours to write a nice report, gave him a big discount, and he goes, well, you didn't shock any fish, I'm not paying you. So that's what Kerry's talking about. So that's what we deal with. And you drove how many hours to get there? Oh, yeah, it was all day. I mean, time I got there, shocked the lake, went back home. Then I then I took time to write a nice report up. Yep. Thanks for that memory, Kerry. <laughs> yep, there you go. Thank, thanks, Kerry, he says. Daryl Lynn's checking in. Wade Bale says, learn to fish the bait. That's pretty sharp right there. I mean, that's what it boils down to. I remember 
Uh, I, I had a client a long time ago, um, outstanding client, passed away probably 15 years ago, but during the 12 or 15 years I got to work with him, he could not catch a fish. And this is this was about the time I started figuring out the Florida bass act different than northern bass. Sure. <clears throat> and Bob Leonard was one of the reasons I learned that, because we go shock the same bass up off the same tree every year for six years in a row, and he couldn't catch it. You know, and so it's, it's you know, I think landowners got to figure out how to play the game. You know, Greg, what this, of course, this hour always flies by. Sure. Always. I'm so glad that uh, we were able to catch up and spend this time. SLMP, tell everybody again where it's going to be and when. Yeah, uh, January 22nd through the 24th, Memphis, Tennessee. Go to lakeprofessionals.org to get more information. Uh, really enjoyed it, Bob. I'm glad we are able to get that word out. Uh, if you want to get us back on to talk more trophy bass management or any other pond management stuff, love to love to be back on. But that was the point today was to get that word out, and I hope to see any professionals, <coughs> any pond owners that want to be at a higher level, and any vendors that want to meet some lake management companies. Love to have them out there. Outstanding. Well, we'll do this again. We'll talk about pond management, growing big fish, and Hey, folks, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks to Greg for coming in and hanging out thanks, with Bob. us. And uh, we will see you next Wednesday, same time, Pond Boss World Headquarters. Adios. See you later. Thanks. Uh -huh. You bet. Thank you. Bye.